In this video, we will look at the basics of a scientific or research paper, the structure of a scientific paper, the shape of a scientific paper, and important factors to consider before writing a scientific paper. So what is a scientific paper? According to Day and Gastel, it is the first written and published report describing original research results. In other words, it is a primary publication. And the goal of a scientific paper is to communicate ideas clearly and in the fewest short words possible. If you want to know more about scientific writing, see my previous video linked in the description below. Now we will look at the basic structure of a scientific paper. IMRAD is the standard organizational structure of a scientific paper, and it stands for Introduction, Methods, Results, and Discussion. It was introduced in the 1940s, but only gained popularity in the 1970s after the publication of the ANSI standard on the preparation of scientific papers. There are numerous benefits to using the IMRAD structure. The modular structure allows for easy organization of information and critical elements for the author. Secondly, it streamlines the review process for editors and peer reviewers. And thirdly, it allows readers to easily identify the stages of an experiment. Unfortunately, this same modular structure often does not correspond to the order in which the experimental procedure was carried out. Furthermore, the IMRAD structure limits the type of information that can be included in a scientific paper. It is because of these limitations that many journals have modified the basic IMRAD structure so that many papers today have two to eight additional sections. Other sections include the abstract, relevant statements, conflicts of interest, sources of funding, conclusions, statements on ethics, acknowledgements, author contributions, theory or literature review, and results and discussion combined. Later, we will discuss how to know which structure you should use. Next, we will look at the shape of a scientific paper. Now that we've established the basic structure of a scientific paper, we will look at its overall shape. This shape is often likened to an hourglass shape because you start off by looking at the broad scope of the field and the knowledge gaps, then narrow it down to your hypothesis, experiment, and results, and relate those back to the impact in your field. Like an hourglass shape, you transition from broad to narrow and back to the broad picture. Now we will look at the purpose of each section following the IMRAD structure. In the introduction, you want to briefly present the current state of knowledge in your field, which is only possible after completing a thorough review of the literature. You also want to look at the gaps in knowledge, and your research question or hypothesis should address this knowledge gap. In the methods section, you want to describe how the study was done and what materials were used. It should be written in such a way so that peers can repeat the experiments and validate your procedures. Repeatability is essential for meeting one of the requirements of a primary publication. In the results section, you present the findings of your study that are supported by statistics. This is the most important section of your paper because it is your contribution to the field. Only the most significant results should be presented here and in the order of importance. And lastly, in the discussion section, you explain the meaning and significance of your results and their relevance in addressing the knowledge gap. Now we will look at important factors to consider before writing a scientific paper. Firstly, always consult the journal instructions to the author. Due to the highly variable structure of a scientific paper, it is always important to consult the journal instructions to the author before starting to write your manuscript. These instructions will explicitly state the structure that the journal uses and it will save you time and effort in the future as you will have one less revision to do. Many students start writing their manuscript before consulting the journal instructions and they spend extra time reformatting and reorganizing their paper. Don't let that be you. Secondly, perform a review of current literature. When performing your review of current literature, you should first make a list of all the research databases relevant to your topic. There are databases for computer science and engineering, such as Engineering Village, Web of Science, or databases for health and medicine, such as Medline or PubMed. 
your university library website will list all of the databases available to you, which you can access using your school email and password. Comment down below if you would like a tutorial on how to efficiently organize and sort your literature sources during your literature review. Next, you want to do a broad search on the field using existing review papers. Doing a literature review is one of the most important steps in the research process, and this takes a lot of time. However, one way to quickly get an overview of the current knowledge in your field is to read review papers, which are secondary publications. You certainly do not want to reinvent the wheel and plan and perform an experiment that has already been done. For more information about what is a secondary publication, see my previous video linked in the description below. The next step is to narrow down your research to the specific topic you're interested in. And finally, your goal is to identify areas where there is a gap in knowledge and identify how your research could contribute to filling that gap. Next, model your paper after the top articles in your field and journal of interest. The top articles are those which have the highest number of citations in your journal of interest or field. Once you've identified the top articles in your field, you want to study and model your paper after them. And that includes the style and quality of writing, the presentation of different types of data, whether that be tables or graphs, and the discussion of the data and its relevance. Fourthly, get advice from more experienced researchers. Vet your manuscript ideas with more experienced researchers in your field. These researchers have been around the block a few times, so they are the best people to get advice from. They can share helpful resources with you, give you helpful career advice, and connect you to other researchers in the field. Fifthly, present your research to an audience. Present your research through oral or poster presentations at a seminar, conference, or meeting. The question and answer session at the end of your presentation can help shed light on some areas in your research project that need improvement or further investigations. Always keep an open mind when receiving constructive criticism and try not to take the comments personally. And sixthly, write down all your ideas. We are creative beings with infinite ideas, but unfortunately, our minds are not made to store these ideas and these ideas often don't last for long. Writing down your ideas can solve these problems and can also bring clarity to your thought. Therefore, jot down your ideas immediately after you have them or take a voice note so that you can retrieve them later. To recap, in this video, we looked at the basics of a scientific paper. We saw that IMRAD is the basic organizational structure of a scientific paper, which is often modified to suit the journal. We then looked at the hourglass shape of a scientific paper, which starts off broadly looking at the knowledge gaps in the field, narrowing down to the specific experiment and results, and then broadening out again to show how the findings contribute to the field. Finally, we looked at six important factors to consider before starting to write your paper. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to not miss any new notifications. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to shoot for the stars!